Do you have the My Arcade Atari Game Station Pro? Do you want to do an upgrade? Do you want to add games? You have come to the right place, my friend. Stick around. Greetings, Retro Zoltan here. If you've watched my review of the Atari Game Station Pro, first of all, thank you. Second of all, you're most likely here to find out how to add games to the system, how to fully utilize the SD slot that my arcade was nice enough to include. To be completely fair as far as my arcade is concerned, this SD slot is purely to allow more save states for your game. So whatever you do from this point on is for testing purposes only and will not be supported by my arcade or people that will give you a hard time about using your system illegally. You didn't see anything. If you're looking for games, that's a mission I can't really help you with, really. But as everyone says, Google's your friends, so you probably won't run into too many obstacles scraping up a library of your favorites. With that said, how? How can I add games? Through watching others' videos and a bit of experimentation, I've been able to conclude that with version 1.2 of your system, you can add the following types of games. Atari 2600, 5200, and 7800, obviously. Game Boy, Game Boy Color... Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Game Boy Advance, and MAME Arcade. I believe with MAME, you'll have the best luck with the 2000 series. My Arcade went ahead and made an upgrade to 1.3, which also allows Super Nintendo, PC Engine, as well as Sega Master System. I'll get into the details about the upgrade shortly. So let's try this as simple as possible. This is how you can add games to your system. Step 1. Grab a micro SD card. Depending on how many games you plan to add, you'll need more or less. I found 32 gig to be a good starting point, but the maximum is still under investigation. Keep in mind the more games you add to the SD card, the longer it takes to load up. So if you're a digital hoarder like myself, you might get frustrated. I say start small first to get a feel for what's happening here. Step 2. Format to XFAT. I've heard that other formatting works, but I've had the best luck using normal Windows software to format to XFAT and that's it. You can name the SD card whatever you want. Step 3. On the newly formatted SD card, make a folder called Games. That's pretty basic so far. Step 4. Copy your ROMs into the Game folder. For this part, you have to make sure your file extensions are correct, otherwise it will confuse the system. Make sure your file names have the following extensions and you shouldn't run into problems. Using spaces or weird characters in the file names don't seem to botch up the works as far as I can see. So have at it and start adding games. Just know, again, make sure your extensions are correct. So, for version 1.2 games, Atari 2600 games should end with an A26, 5200 would be A52, 7800 would be A78, Game Boy games will be a .GB, Game Boy Color games is a .GBC, Game Boy Advance games a .GBA, NES games will be a .NES, Sega Genesis will be BIN, and MAME games will be a zip file. And as a last minute addition, Game Gear is a GG file, and Sega CD will need both the Q and BIN files. Also, be sure to leave MAME games alone. Leave them named what they are, and definitely, definitely don't unzip them. For version 1.3, you can also add Super Nintendo games, which will have an SFC extension, PC Engine, which will have a PCE extension, and for Sega Master System will be an SMS extension. Now, with version 1.2, Atari Game Station trying to organize your system into folders are going to be a problem here. It doesn't recognize them. It will only read what's in the root of the games folder, and that's it. And the more games you have, the more of a mess it's going to be, so I highly suggest renaming your games with a prefix that you will recognize if you have a long list of games. So something like Atari 2600 underscore, or GB underscore, or NES underscore before the game names. For huge lists, I use a multiple file renamer, and that seems to do the trick. Just a few things before I forget. While we're renaming files to organize things, remember, again, to leave the MAME games as they're named. The file names are important to the emulator, so don't mess with those. As far as Sega CD goes, if you want, you can change the names, but make sure both the Q and BIN files match, since they certainly need each other. And speaking of Sega CD, you're not going to get far without the BIOS files also. So to cover all the bases, go out and find the three Sega CD BIOS files. Rename them to BIOS underscore CD underscore U bin, BIOS underscore CD underscore E bin, and BIOS underscore CD underscore J bin. 
and pop them into the same game folder. These will allow USA, European, and Japanese ROMs respectively. And while we're messing around in the games folder, if you're a true MAME fan, you can copy your samples folder over for those games that need them. Slap this in the same directory as everything else. Step 5. Put your SD in your system and turn it on. If you did everything correctly, the system will ask you if you want to run off the SD or the base system. When you choose SD, you'll see the following, depending on what you added. From here, you can pick the game and, well, you know the rest. Keep in mind, if you're adding a paddle game, it will not know that and it won't work properly. You also don't really get save states either, unless if the game has a save feature like Zelda for the NES. But even then, your results may vary. Remember, this is experimental. Given that my arcade has nothing to do with what you're doing here, you'll get mixed results on the control for certain games and whatnot. It's all experimental and unsupported, but for the most part, they're playable. What's worse is there's no way to change the button mappings, not for the current versions anyway. But there, of course, is more. Version 1.3 has been released, which cleans up the menus, allows more systems, allows folders in the root menu, and even more. With putting games in folders, you can really organize your library. You can even put folders inside of folders for those who really like to be organized. So how do we upgrade to version 1.3? I'll give you a quick rundown. But if my tutorial isn't good enough, my arcade provides a PDF with detailed instructions, as well as an embedded video from Gen X Grown Up, who, to be honest, inspired me to go ahead and purchase this in the first place. He needs no props from me, but I have to give credit where it's due, and I really appreciate his work. So for the upgrade, keep in mind, in order to do this, you'll need a Windows PC, as well as a USB cable that can handle power and data. Before doing the upgrade, I'm guessing it would be good to verify your version. You can check this by going into the settings in the main menu, then choosing About, and check the bottom. If you're running 1.2, I suggest you do the following. Otherwise, you can skip this completely. Step 1. Download the zip file provided, which will have a driver and a firmware updater. Step 2. Unzip the files. Step 3. Run the firmware updater driverinstall.exe in the drives folder. Step 4. Prepare the firmware updater in the firmware updater folder. Click firmware updater. Choose the loader and select loader bin file in the firmware folder. Choose firmware and select firmware IMG in the firmware folder. Step 5. Connect the USB cable from your PC to the console. Turn it off if it turns on. Step 6. Push a pen or a paper clip into the reset hole in the back and then turn on the power. The lights won't turn on, and this is normal. Step 7. Watching the software on your PC, wait for the software to say, Found One Mask ROM Device. Click Run and wait. When complete, turn the power off on your console. Wait for the PC software to say no device is found, and you're done. Turn on the system and enjoy. With this upgrade, you'll see some obvious enhancements, especially to the SD card. Now, you don't really need prefixes anymore. The world is your oyster if you really want to break out your games into whatever folders you want. Keep in mind with Sega CD, put those BIOS files in the same folder as your Q and BIN files. And as far as MAME is concerned, keep your samples and artwork files in the MAME directory as well. Now, with version 1.3, you can add Super Nintendo, PC Engine, and of course Sega Mega Drive games as well. And as a special treat, if you have an Atari game that needs paddles, add a folder called Atari 2600 Paddle, and whatever games you put in there will have your much-wanted paddle support. I'm assuming this is for Atari Paddle games only, but the temptation to toss Arkanoid in there is more than tempting. So is the upgrade worth it? I think so. So much has been fixed, so much has been cleaned up that you can't lose, honestly. And if you're into Super Nintendo and want those games on your system, it's a no-brainer. Keep in mind this is a supported upgrade, and I suspect there'll be another one, a 1.4 in the future that will give even more support. There's already even custom firmware out there from Atari age people that allows you to add your games without having to break into an SD card menu at all. It's impressive to say the least. I'll provide a link and information below to that as well. So after a review, and now a tutorial, I think that's all I have to say about the My Arcade Atari GameStation Pro. It's great as it is, really something I wanted to have, but with the addition of an SD slot, it really brings this to another level. It's a bit frustrating that certain games won't work because the joystick isn't customizable or different, but my arcade is working on that also, so expect alternative controllers sooner than later. It's a thing, and I like it, and I think you will too. 
Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.